Often people give an object to a museum because they want other people to enjoy it as much as they did. Museums today are really challenged often with the volumes of their collections. And that object that your grandmother gave to the Art Institute may not be on the walls there today. And the intent that she really hoped was that many people would see it, it's just not the case. It's driving another change, which is the rise of this single collector museum. But today, the nature of giving and dealing with the process of accessioning art, often many contemporary collectors don't want to deal with that. They want you to experience it the way they did, how, what their eye was, less about the object, but the process of collecting. And I think that's why you're seeing things like the Broad. It's why Alice Walton's great Crystal Bridges Museum has been such an extraordinary success. They're not always pitfalls. There are great kind of uh, delightful consequences around art. Hello, this is Richard Moraes, the editor of Barron's Penta. I'm at Expo Chicago, the fast-growing art fair, and I caught up with Henry Johnson, the vice chairman for wealth management at Northern Trust, and I asked him, what are some of the issues that show up with families when they're collecting art? Probably the biggest challenge is that estate planning is effectively an asset-based uh, analysis, but collecting is object-based. And there's an inherent tension between those two things. Families often think about what they've acquired on a cost basis. I paid X to acquire this. And yet those types of valuations shift and, and move at increasing velocity around the world. And it has incredibly important ramifications for planning. A family with a collection of three significant works of art, they have two children, they decide to give one to each child and one to philanthropy. And there can be unintended consequences of what you intended to be a equal third, third, third solution. And all of a sudden philanthropy may be getting three quarters, two thirds based on the appreciation of that one object. And so what we try to remind people as they're thinking about their planning is not to be too specific about objects, but to leave flexibility around what are ultimately assets and think more about the asset equation, if you will, the financial value than the specifics of the object. I think another fundamental flaw that is often inherent in people's planning around their objects, which is they think that the next generation wants them. And changes in, in taste, changes in scholarship, there's, there've been incredible, almost seismic shifts in the art world from as recently as 25 years ago when English furniture, old master paintings, impressionist art, export porcelains, those were what people collected and filled their homes with. The millennial today declutters English furniture, which your grandmother loved. You're probably selling it for less than she paid for it 40 years ago. The point I always like to make is, is it the collection or the collecting that a family is trying to hand down? People, families often get misconstrued the intent of a family saying we'd like our collection to be given to our family because we got so much joy from it. And people then attach the object to the gift of the collection. And in fact, what I think most families are trying to do is impart a real love of collecting within their family.